Welcome to the second edition of the Noise Up Show as we return to rant, discuss what's on our minds, what's in the papers, what happened in Leith. And uh, my guests today are Alex Grant, Laurie Stewart, Phil Attridge. And my name is Stuart Lockhead and I'll try not to lose my voice as I cough. So today we've had many things to talk about but we've just been talking about Trump. Um, the invest the, the, the Fergus Ewing, the minister, gave the go-ahead for this experimental wind farm off the Aberdeen coast where a new off offshore wind turbines can be tested. And uh, Donald Trump apparently has um, obviously wasn't very happy with different reports. One report says that he's pulling out Scotland altogether. On the other hand, Nori here, we were saying that there's a report that um, the company yeah, that's investing in this wind turbine experimental place has put, put a hold on the, a piece, the investment. Piece in today's Times. Um, they got a win, but then they seem to be saying they won't make a decision for almost two years. George Soriel, Executive Vice President of the Trump Organization, said, in my mind, this development won't happen now. But Vattenfall, the actual company, said they were never going to make the decision until mid 2014 and that they intend to go ahead. So okay. it looks like it's the Trumps trying to trump with no cards. All right. Mm -hmm. As usual. So um, it's, I quite like it, and the fact that Trump got, didn't get what he, his way, his bullying didn't get him yeah. his way. I mean, Fergus Ewing is about as far to the right as you could be and still stay in the SNP, as far as I know. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, so you would have thought he would have been kind to big business, but um, there you go. He's decided not to take a whatever Trump would be offering in the way of a bribe. <laughs> <coughs> and well, I, don't, I don't think the Scottish government could afford any more negativity. I mean, Trump, although the discussion with Trump was started by ex-predecessor, let's face it, the fact is, all of the crap that's come out, particularly that program they made about him, which was disgraceful, really, the way he behaved, the fact that there could be any concessions given to the guy would have been political suicide. So they've got to, they've got to t stick it to him. And I think the Scottish government have got a lot of credit because most people can't, cannot possibly want to support Trump. So have, yeah, you, have you seen the movie You've Been Trumped? I have, yeah. yeah. yeah good. But, yes. but Trump is actually really, I mean, yeah, because Trump, but he's. That's exactly the way the American system works when it looks at the world. The world is there for the Americans That's to right. do, not yeah. just Trump. I mean, he That's is true. just, I mean, they're all like that. The Rumsfelds, the, I mean, even, even Obama's like that, slightly more laid back, but basically run around telling everybody what to do. And Local hero. Still what the they movie. want e everywhere. I mean, people should actually wake up around the world to what, to what America is, you know, yeah, or but what you're like. Local hero, to be fair to what Phil's saying, though, local hero basically said big tough American company but at the end of the day you know not really that bad quite a nice life really I mean romantic soft yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and this is a, this is a major theme I think going forward because um, it's interesting how the, the neoliberals that we have in charge of Britain actually try to portray any opportunity Alex Salmond who has spoken to Rupert Murdoch or Donald Trump as as the Scottish government, Alex Salmond in particular, is in bed with oh, the yeah. neoliberal nasty boys, and that's a really hard one to to deal with. I mean, as we marched down the the mound going to that uh, rally last uh, whatever, September, yeah. I mean, the guy could could a music on the corner had a banner on the railings saying it's all very well to to give Amazon uh, ten billion ten million quid or whatever it was to invest in Scotland. He's not paying any corporation tax. I am, yeah. and I'm trying to sell records. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the investment and the jobs go with it, with the with the fairness and everything else yeah. is a really hard one to balance. And I think one of the things the Scottish government has to do if it's going to persuade people of the benefits of independence is to say we can find that balance. And that, I mean, there's, again, in the Times today, there's a piece: Labour too close to tax avoidant experts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Six hundred thousand pounds worth of free advice. That's the Labour front bench. That's what Tom McCabe is now doing. Apparently, he's getting money. I mean, he was the money man in the Lib Labour Scottish government, Labour. Scottish Labour. Yeah, um, and now he's actually giving advice on 
tax avoidance or whatever you call it, you know. Uh, I mean, it's, it runs right through New Labour. When you actually have a look at all the ones that they caught, Channel 4 got trying to sell their services pretending to be taxes on two legs, you know, uh, Byers and Hoon and Hewitt and I mean, they were all that. They were all, I mean, and every single Secretary of State for Health in, in, in the new Labour government was acting as a consultant before, during and after the fact yeah. with private health companies. Yeah. They were all up that, to their snouts and, and Ingram. seriously outrageous. And the number of people in the Lords have got money in private oh, health companies. Oh yeah, it's huge. But the best yeah. one was Ingram, um, who was the Armed Forces Minister. Yeah. He was earning £170,000 a year on top of his parliamentary wages, etc, etc. Uh, being a consultant to wait to, to arms companies uh, well, around the, the planet. That's it's the best job on the planet, oh, the Minister of Defence, because you, you have a guaranteed gravy train for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. Which is why Murphy will never attempt to be leader of the Labour Party, because he's got the best job in Parliament, and if he retires from it, he'll, he'll do exactly what Ingram's done. He'll have a pension for life of he's, six he's, he's probably out, and that's why he stands there, legs are kingo, his hand jump, jingling away in his pockets, enjoying himself, so as he thinks about all these lovely weapons he gets to play with. So it's all corruption. <laughs> there, isn't it? Uh, what about today? We've got three um, UK government ministers in Aberdeen. Why did they take three of them? Lord, I don't know what happened this week. Exactly. Somebody, there must be a cheap return to England or something this week. No, uh, they, they haven't worked out. You know, they've got Alistair Darling rubbishing the, the value of oil, but by definition, they have to play it up for another agenda. And I don't know whether... It's, what amazes me is, have they had a conversation to say, well, the better together boys have been trying to rubbish this all week. Are we seriously, all three of us, particularly Moore, who's been part of it, he's supported everything Darling said, right. and yet he's part of the triumvirate in Aberdeen saying, yes, is he he's this? disappeared. We've not heard from him this last week. Well, Moore? No, there's been nothing that I can, that I've seen. Well, you were saying last week on one of the shows we did that uh, you thought he was trying to, he might get his, his cards. I, 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 I just felt he looked very uncomfortable the week before this. He was at. I can't remember what the what I can't even remember what the particular scare story was, but he didn't look comfortable. It was the oil, in fact. Well, it's not much as, as a slime ball as the he didn't the, look comfortable the or whatever it is. You know, he the, didn't look comfortable. Who the rodent. They, who Alex, are they going to put? Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the thing is, that's it, exactly right, Nori. Who are they going to put in his place? They have to have a liberal because they can't have a Tory because they can't put Mundell in his place. Jesus, please God, I would pay for that. Um, <laughs> but. They can't find anybody else. He's going to stay in. in. In actual fact, to be fair to Moore, which I hate to be, there have been occasions when, by continuing to keep it dead calm, never get excited, he, I think he's probably, relative to lots of other liberals, I suspect if you did some research, he comes across as one of the better liberals, I suspect. I've still got a campaign to get rid of him at the next election, oh, yeah. but that's another story. But, 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 but to sum up, I mean, there's three government ministers. To say what? To say that uh, there's, there's a huge there, investment, that I, the, this new oil field they're expecting until after 2050? Yeah, there's a subtext though, there's a subtext, Stuart. If you listen carefully, they're taking the risk of playing up oil, but, they, but they're, they've said the, the only way to properly exploit it is for the UK they, to exploit exactly. it. And Newcastle wow. got a mention this morning, and there's no doubt in my mind there's a good chance of lots of stuff they're going to do. They're talking about bringing this pipeline into Newcastle, aren't they, across the... Uh, well, North we're talking sea. about the grid, the super grid connector yeah, yeah. from Norway. It would yeah. land in England, Northern England rather than in Scotland, no, exactly. which, which would be the logical place for it to come to. Well, but that's an interesting yeah. strategy. That's what I don't quite understand. You know, I know that for this carbon capture thing, Peter, Peter Head is still one of the two, along with an English um, option in Newcastle or whatever, and the question is going to be who are they going to give it to? This is the power station. Yeah. They might get the. Yeah, yeah. The carbon capture deal for a billion pounds in well, What the are last, they going to the do? The last thing I saw about it, they were looking for two sites. One was Peterhead, one was in England, but there's a third. Well, I thought they, I can't remember. I thought the short list was down to two, though. I thought it was no, one on the Kent they, coast. No, no, they were looking for Kent. two sites. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think they've made the decision to put the money into them. I well, I think they probably are. I, but what I'm saying is it's going to be to get the. You, your point is well made bringing it up, but to get the right balance between talking up UK energy and not screwing Scotland, but implying that Scotland can't do it on its own, is a, it's a very, very dangerous strategy because, you know, 
Who's going to believe it, basically? Well, I, I, so I say, I'm, I don't know whether people on the street believe that, that the minute you play out energy, surely to God you've got to believe, well, if we, if we invest in the exploit the ourselves. Thing is ridiculous. What do we not have in Scotland that we need in order to run the oil? Well, you know, I'll tell you... A solemn vote. No, but I'll tell you what we don't have. I'll tell you, interesting enough, what we, they tried this this morning. What we don't have... I mean, I've got a pal who worked in the North Sea 20 years ago. And I, I don't We're know... We're of engineers. Exactly. And now that... But they'll come. I, yeah, I know, but it's... From it's anywhere. A, it's a very work. dangerous strategy, because Ed can turn around and say, well... Well, you see, you're suggesting that all these potential jobs for Scots, if we train them, are going to be spread up amongst them. I mean, you've got to be careful how you say this. I mean, my, my dad worked in the oil industry all these days. I mean, Saudi Arabia, still 50% of the people there aren't Saudi. No, no, I know that. I know that. But to, to suggest yeah. that only Britain can supply the workforce for Scotland. Yeah, well, that's a bit silly. It's not hey, let's, let's, get, let's, let's get animated. But can I... Give, give well, you no, let's get animated, then you can give us something. Let, let's get animated. Let's talk about the rat bag. Willie Black. Yeah, give, go for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Phil, let, you can get going now. Let's you, spell Willie Black. You oh, know well, this Willie Black. Oh, yeah, I'm not Willie for years. You know, you, you, you know his ex, he, he, Heather Black, who's in, in the foot of the wall. Um, and another firebrand, but they're since divorced. But Willie's always been... Um, this is the guy stuck it, he stuck it firebrand, to the ID, yeah. IDS yesterday in the job. Yeah, I mean, when he, he got a job. Oh, God, it was that... What path? When they were building, is it a nuclear power station along? Torrens? Torrens side when they were building that. And Willie got a job there. He's an electrician. I was an electrician to trade in that. And Willie wasn't there two days. And what's the first thing he does as an SWP electrician? Everybody out, let's start. And so he didn't be long before Willie got emptied out. But he's been consistent. Any kind of demo, Willie's there. He stood, he stood in elections. Were you, were you impressed? Oh, yeah. Well, I was in, in, impressed, well, because, you know, faced with such a disgusting excuse for a human being is IDS. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it would be really difficult. Allegedly. No, I think he... I, I, think I mean, I, I got an invitation... I think he's a Vulcan or really joking? I got, an, Vulcan, Vulcan, I got an invitation to go to this thing, There's but it's four hundred and fifty eight pound a ticket. So I was surprised that they managed to get somebody in there. Oh, yeah, but I mean, that, but it was that whole bit, he was, you know, he threw a bit, it's just that oh, lots of other George, people were just... George is easy to crash. Yeah, we're, we're through, the back with, right through the kitchen. No, yeah. it's easy to crash, you just bullshit them. I mean, they don't question you because you presume anybody with a brass neck to go to the door. <laughs> but to do that to right with that, swearing so I thought it was good. Well, that was very good, yes, it, 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 was, it was very good. And then the, the, other, the second couple, after they got rid of this Willie Black, this other couple sat there with a, a guide dog started up as well. And so, I think they sure he had a crutch as well, did he not? Well, he I was mean, turning you know, a it, stick because he couldn't it, see very well. What Quite I liked sticky. was, this is the disabled speaking for themselves. Yeah. What are you going to do about and it? And of course, I heard some, from somebody else whose name I could mention, Tommy, but maybe not, um, that the, the, the plan was that Tommy would be in there as well and he would punch IDS in the face, but hey, that never happened. No, uh, no, 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 no. Tommy Martin, he's a regular at the foot of the walk and he was. He probably had a few pints of lager in his head. He's a regular at the port. Port. Please. I've seen him in. I've seen him in the foot. You've been drinking too much. Okay. Let's not worry about his drinking. Banned from the port. If it didn't banned from the port. That was it. Ah, it's just socialist. But I mean, uh, I, another yeah, socialist work. Yeah, the interesting thing is, if your man hadn't turned up at that meeting, IDS would still be getting treated relatively gently, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the fact that he went to Easter House and had a good greet once doesn't impress me. You know, but if if your man Black hadn't been there to at least give some copy to the papers to... to it was better than that. It was better than that. It was on the London News at lunchtime yesterday. Oh, yeah, sorry, it was. It was. So, so that was great. great. He got great yeah. publicity. But I did, but you're right. Can I just do a bit of clarification here? Right, a bit of clarification, because it's just... Because I did say the SWP, now, well, he used to be in the SWP. He's no the, No, but then the SWP joined with the SSP, and they all did it. So you've got the SWP, the SSP, and Solidarity with Tommy Sherman. And actually, I'm not quite sure which one he's in. But no, he's in Solidarity. He's in a Trotskyist organisation. <laughs> so, well, I mean, sorry, but I'm always thought if you get two... I mean, you've got, you got two Trots. That's no oh, yeah, it, it really got headline news. Yeah. Uh, right, now, we mustn't, we mustn't... But not mention the bedroom tax. Sorry, what was that? But can I just give you one short one before we go on to that? Because that could be right. a good luck. Yeah, yeah. And now, 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 don't all laugh at once, but Margaret Curran is complaining that the SNP are using negative tactics. I mean, do I get an inward gasp here of shock? Horror? No, 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 that's what they do. They just tell fibs. Yeah. No, they sit down at a meeting and they go, right, what are we doing that people don't like? 
Let's accuse them of that. Yeah, and that's yeah. what they do. Yeah, and that and that's and that's what Ruth Davidson did at FMQ. Is yeah. exactly that. But apparently she's been going because they're portraying the referendum as a choice between independence or a conservative government at Westminster. Uh, well, yeah. So that's why is that negative? Well, that's your thought. Exactly. Like, you see, it's silence. Speechless. Well, well, I think it is negative, but I think it's a very positive negative. Because if you don't get All positive right. and negative, you don't get electricity, Sorry. so you don't get charged. Do you? Sorry, how is it negative? I'm confused now. Because Margaret sure Carter, because negative? she is the Governor General in waiting. All right, okay. Because she says so it is. Yeah, the Secretary yeah, of State. But, yeah, but this, is a, this yeah. is a classic Labour defence. You know that as well yeah. as I do. If you don't vote Labour, you'll get a Conservative government. So don't vote SNP. You, it's, you know, they did it at the, at the 2010 general election. The only place that Gordon Brown got any increased support was Scotland because the Labour Party said if you don't vote for him, the yeah. West, and nobody else will vote That's for him. True. And nobody else did vote for him, but the Scottish Labour vote went up. Please God, they've woken up to that. Uh, but the bedroom tax, guys, there's a, there was a rally on Saturday, two days away. We're all going there. B BBC Scotland Shire, I don't know if they've done it yet. BBC Scotland Shire, that is. Okay. That's it. Proof. Okay. That's just Google it right here. Proof and nothing but the spoof. Very good. Right. right. Um, I've done a piece. I don't know if it's been published yet. The gist of which is Jackie Bailey telling the SNP to tell the like, Labour Party to stop doing what they're doing so that the Labour Party can get to be honest again. <laughs> which is essentially, I mean, I actually well, basically, emailed them and said, oh, I thought this was supposed to be spoofs. This is the truth. That is what she's saying. She's saying we want the SNP government to legislate so that the Labour Party won't be embarrassed about decisions being made in Westminster, but we can't support your legislation because I'm not really sure why, but somebody has to keep us look, honest. She, so we want look, the they can't even get their own councillors in Scotland, councils in Scotland, to, 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 you know, to uh, stop people being evicted. They want the right. SNP to legislate so that they you can hear it. people you won't be evicted. You can hear it now. SNP legislate, they make it illegal to evict anybody for bedroom tax. Labour Party objects strongly to the legislation because it's undermining the independence of councillors. That's a nice line for BBC Scotland, so, uh, but, but that's not... And the game they're playing is they've obviously worked out that the SNP don't want to legislate. So it's always easy to say, oh, you've got this amount of devolution and you haven't used that part. And the SNP, in my opinion, haven't properly explained why they're not legislating. I know they've said our councils won't do this, but, you know, it's a very good line. They don't stand up to anything in Westminster. They abstain, as, as uh, Stuart Campbell has pointed out ad nauseum last week on everything, but then they say, right, how can we have a dig at the Scottish yeah. Government? You could do something about this. We're doing fucking mm. all about it down there, but you could do something. Meanwhile, guys, but just before we all get carried away, the, ra the rally in Edinburgh is at noon, and it's in St Andrews Square. There's also a rally in Glasgow, and it's in George Square. Oh, but, the, but the Glasgow people were making the mistake of saying the rallies in in George Square without mentioning that it was in Glasgow. And there, there are rallies that happen in George Square in Edinburgh. Mm. And I had to point out in a, in a tweet that, you know, I had to read G. Very really. But if you have a look at it, though, it's, there's 105,000 Scottish social housing tenants could lose between 14 and 25 percent of uh, their benefit because no, of 14 what? pounds and 25 40 percent and 25 percent, depending whether you've got one, and it's 25 percent if you get. Two rooms or more? It's not percent, it's pounds. Pounds, okay. 14 pounds? Yeah, 14 pounds. 25 pounds. 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 Right. I don't know how much it is if you've got three spare rooms. It's, I think it's still the same 25 percent. Well, it, this is, Tommy Sheridan said a couple of weeks ago he was going to get behind the protest against this. Because uh, he oh, sees, no. he sees, no, well, okay, I'm, I'm not making a point, I'm just saying, he said he was going to get behind it and do a poll tax number on it. I think it has the potential for a poll tax protest. Not quite so much because it hits less people, but it hits more people than than a lot of folk uh, would like to think. And when it does hit them, if they haven't got the money, where are they going to be? And these people don't have the money. That, I mean, that's the problem with it. It is not the argument that it solves overcrowding, even in some four boroughs in London, which apparently was really... That's yes, what it's worth for, aye. Right. But they haven't sat down and said, had they sat down and said, right, over three years, we're going to introduce this. 
So if you want to get out of a three bedroom flat and into a one bedroom You've got flat, time. but there isn't any. Trying to do it. You've got to build them. But if you come first, we'll give you your moving expenses. Aye. But there aren't any one bedroom flats for them to move. No, that's right. That's why it's, it's just a way to take money out. Correct. It's a way to reduce how much subsidy they get. But it's, I, I think it, it's also going to be a catalyst for us because here's, here's a bit in, again. I mean, this is. The hell seems to be getting a bit like the garden dust. Blasted misprints, which we just done, I, put, I just read it from it. Percentages, but it's also about the what the, what the disabled are getting up to six different cuts from a long list: this incapacity benefit assessment, bedroom tax, council tax benefit, child benefit, switch to personal independence payments, and the overall benefits cap, the time limit on ESA, whatever that is, um, the abolition of the independent living fund. I mean, it's going on and on. But also, see, when you start losing these, it's disabled. It means you'll lose your mobility car. You also lose your blue badge. Your mobility, right yeah. to mobility, yeah. your blue and, badge. And, yeah. and your equipment. I mean, you lose everything. You're just basically... People will be committing suicide. Without oh, yeah. Because you're actually... You're, you're going to be like people... Yeah, some people already are. Just stuck. I mean, now when you actually look at... You go out and you see people out in wheelchairs, and they're out in their electric wheelchairs, and they go shopping, and they go away, and they go through to Glasgow, and they go... And it's great. It's not always before you... Don't you go to Glasgow on their scooters. I had to have a laugh. <laughs> My, my dad's got a disability badge on it because he walks with a Zimmer. And they now, you're limited to three hours on it wherever you park. Mm -hmm. So they've got this sort of cardboard clock. So you put the time you arrive, yeah, yeah, that's right, and you put it on the dashboard. So, so it took him an hour to get from the bottom car park at the Western. So it was half an hour up and half an hour back down. What's he doing? Walking. Oh, Zimmer. walking. Right? Oh, oh, so, yeah, it's true. But he was being, he was being bullshit. I'll walk, you know. I mean, he, what he should have done was let me just go get a car and pick him up at the door. <laughs> but I can imagine a situation where you're going to need just the three hours to get to where you want to go, because some of these parking bays are miles away away from where. But you it's just be. the fact that na nowadays you take it for granted that, that people in wheelchairs and people with excessive but can get out. They can get into things. But I mean, so you'll have all these places that. The people have to add disability access to, but they're all stuck at home because they're not getting any. You know, and unless you actually in, have independent means, you're not going to be able to afford to for a mobility or or anything. Well, does anyone agree with me that I think this bedroom tax will be uh, as as big a, pro a problem for the government as the poll tax was? I think it has some no. propensity because think, it, yeah, it's no. got. It's the point is it's that there are an awful lot of people who are not politically aware. Are, going, are very upset about it. Well, it's hitting well, social taxes, not hitting everybody. Problem, it tax at everybody. Your, prob your problem is that there are people I know who are in houses with, they've got three kids, young married couples with three parents, they're in two bedroom houses, and basically they can't even move. Who think it's a good idea because they want a three bedroom house. Yeah, they do, yeah. You know? And, so, and the working ones especially are buying in to the Tory thing. Yeah, about right. Why should these buggers who don't get out of their bed in the morning, you know, get this extra subsidy? No, I, it, I think there are a lot of people be a who split. actually won't have any. No, be a split. I, I don't think. I think it could be. Ex, it could be exploited against the Tories quite significantly, but not as much as the poll tax. So, because the poll tax hit people in their own houses living in little flats. That's right. It hit everybody. Um, yeah, it hit everybody. Whereas somebody living in a a Donald Trump style house paid sweet bugger all. But then again, you have a look at people living in huge houses now with the council tax that they wanted. They should just start adding more bans. There's an awful lot they could do. There's an awful lot um, the Scottish government could do, Land. the Labour Party could do, uh, and they don't. They Land. don't. They Land spend tax. all their time worried stiff about. Well, that's the revolutionary you thing. Know. Nobody's going to. No party is going to bite that bullet, as far as I can see. They're all dead fear of it. Not yet. I mean, you have to you, you have to, to, to work people right. back into a progressive right. stack. In, you have to work us back into a progressive yeah. tax system. Well, right. I, look, I know, but let's come back to the point. This is, a, this is an interesting strategy from the government, because a lot of people think it's a good idea. The Labour Party are going to try very, very, very hard to exploit it, even though they're, their paw prints are over it in the first instance. Oh. But they're going to try particularly in Scotland, to portray it as nothing to do with them, which is why they're standing there saying, you can fix it, Mr. Salmon, and if he doesn't fix it, I, I think a lot of folk in the street are going to say, I don't understand this. If, I know when, if you watch news that last night, in my opinion, it wasn't clear, and it needs to... It, it, well, it, it, it didn't put up a very good spokesman. No. Well, it made no bones about it. It was the Labour Party, when they were in power, that, that, that appointed Lord Freud, and he came up with a bedroom tax. Yeah. Mm. 
Well, they introduced them. Well, but but have you had them, other horrors. Have you had anybody, for example, in the Scottish government make that comment? I haven't. Oh, well, yes. I mean, yesterday's um, debate oh, yeah, was yeah. fantastic. Oh, was it? I didn't when, see uh, that. Nicola Sturgeon just took the J J Jackie ripped Bailey apart. apart. Right. Ripped her apart. Oh, I must watch that. And what was that. interesting was she did it every time she stood up. She started quietly picking her apart and then she ended up basically roaring like a lion. Not, not a peep. Is that right? On Thanks. any of the Scottish channels, I bet. All right, but given we're reviewing the papers, she was, she was very, very... Is there anything in the papers about the fact you got crucified yesterday? But I, I don't know, know that's a surprise to me. It was all on, it's all on it's social all networking, of course. Right, it's not... It, but it's not on the won't find it. I looked through the papers today, nothing about it. And she took her apart. And talking about social networking, I'd like to congratulate the Reverend Stuart Campbell on reaching £33,000 oh, for crowdfunding so that he can yeah. uh, keep wings for Scotland. Good. Wings over Scotland, go in there for a year and get paid for it. Yeah, no, I donated too. Um, yeah. I too. No, he's a he's a he's oh, a terrific wow. operator. And and I'd also like to mention in dispatches our friend Duncan Hothersall, who managed to get mentioned in two articles this week. Yep. One by Wings, I think it was. And what was the other one by? What's Probably he, by Bella. What's he done now? <laughs> well, it was a ludicrous defence of something he came up with. No, he defended. He defended a couple of weeks ago. He wrote a blog piece, a well written and a. Give him his due, it was well written and it was oh, yeah. fairly well reasoned, but it wasn't a good enough reason. What he essentially said was they abstained on the work to welfare yeah. in order to get concessions, concessions from the but, Tories. But never never the concessions. What concessions? What concessions? But nobody's published the concessions. That's a lot of crap. But yeah. anyway, well done Duncan, you can mention the dispatches on this programme as well. So that's three times this week. <laughs> this is more I'd like to congratulate him for talking some sense, I've never seen any. <laughs> Well, well, excuse me. But there is another little uh, Labour moan this, this in, in the papers today, and it's Scots Labour blow, and it's about all women shortlists. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. In the Scottish Parliament in Labour, you've, you've got roughly 50, almost 50 50. Um, 47 Yeah, something like that. Um, and Labour they've got Labour. Up, um, five, they wanted five seats, winnable seats, uh, or target seats, um, to be put, all women. So, um, and it was put to a Westminster committee well, they to decide. They choose, do they? Oh, of course. I mean, do you not know you're a colony now? Uh, well, always have been, even if you're in the Labour Party. But they've allowed one to be all women. And it's the one that they don't have a chance of. All Angus. women. Angus. Yeah, in, in a... In Angus. The Labour Party's not going to get up to see in Angus. But in, they've got 23 out of... 48, I think it is, it's on there, 23 out of 48. Um, treated. No, it's on there. And I'm really sorry for this, guys, but I think it's a direct quote. They've treated the other regions of the UK somewhat better. Of course. Other regions. Mm -hmm. And also as well, um, is anybody going to miss David Miliband? Shh. No. Apparently he's off, nice, well-heeled oh, job, probably yeah. with a big, fat pension. Well, and and he's, he's been termed, actually, in here as... From a uh, Labour Party, new Labour apparatchiks, and you know those that sit at his knees, uh, uh, so the king over the water. Mm. The king over the water. Goodness, yeah. I remember the first time. Will he be back? Well, I hope not. Well, uh, within within his brother minutes, will come back. within minutes of that going out, it was all the way through. But always, oh, he's, he's distancing himself so he can come back to lead the party. Oh, but I mean, this whole idea, I mean, who is he? He's one is. individual. These are elected representatives. There's yeah, 60 oh, million gonna, people in this. steam coming out of 60 million years. people. But this individual, this, uh, well, one of the members of Tony Blair's cabinet, so I should imagine, yeah, he's a war criminal, just like the rest. But no, no, we want a war criminal king coming back across. All right, the I think, I think well, the before, before we run out of batteries, before we run out, run mm -hmm. out of memory, <laughs> and before Sorry, I just Phil, fl I flicked the emergency cut off. Completely explodes. I think this <laughs> Thank you for watching or listening, and goodbye. <laughs>